All right. Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Okay. Number one, go Giants. Happy that they won. It's awesome. Okay. But how about a Yankees news? How about a Yankees signing? Okay. Yeah. Again, they haven't traded for a big left fielder yet, but they signed the pitcher. And this is a textbook Cashman move. He's going to be stockpiling arms in the event that he can't sign somebody like Andrew Chafin in free agency or acquire one via trade, right? Because he's already addressed the, uh, he's already s- s- uh, signified the need or the desire to bring in another reliever. And obviously, we know that they're trying to upgrade in the left field as well. Brian Reynolds, again, we talk about him at exhaustion, but he's the only guy that really represents a clear upgrade in left field. But there's still some moves that they can make, so we'll see what happens. And it's still, you know, almost five weeks until pitchers and catchers report. So I expect them to make a couple of moves. But they signed Matt Bowman. He's a 31-year-old right-handed pitcher. And again, this is textbook Cashman trying to stockpile as many arms as possible to see if they can catch lightning in the bottle with somebody. Now, he's had a couple injuries over the last couple of years, also recovering from Tommy John in 2020. He got an invite to spring training last year, <clears throat> okay, um, on a minor league deal with the, you know, again, that's what he's gotten. That's what he got this year, too, an invite to a minor league deal with an invite to spring training to see if he does really well and can make it, uh, at the very least, stay in AAA or get to the major league level because they are looking to add another bullpen arm. So we just don't know what they're going to do yet. So this is why Cashman makes a lot of these moves, and he does them all year, all offseason too. He stockpiles arms and stockpiles position players like Calhoun and you know for left field and, and some of these other guys, Ortega. You never really know what they're going to do. But in case he can't <clears throat> make a move in free agency via trade, that's the whole point of these depth moves. So they sign Matt Bowman. His stats aren't crazy sexy, but um, in like 180 innings, let's see what he's got. I'm going to pull it up for you here. In 180 innings, he's got about 180 strikeouts or something like that. And, you know, over the years. But he profiles as a reliever and not a starting pitcher. So this is what they're trying to do. And, again, his ERA is over four. His stats aren't sexy, okay? He's like 7-13 and or something like that. So, But you never know. Clay Clay Holmes' stats weren't sexy until he got uh, paired up with Matt Blake. So this type of stuff happens. Now, am I expecting something? No, but... Am I surprised that Cashman did this? No. This is typical Cashman, typical Yankee stuff. Stockpiling depth pieces to have as many arms and as many players as possible to compete for, compete for a small amount of positions in spring training. So, Matt Bowman, he's had, inj- uh, he's had major league experience with the Cardinals and the Reds. So, you know, he's, he's been to the show. He's had a cup of coffee there. So, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. So, and then now, before I pivot over to something else, I hope that you enjoy this content enough to subscribe to the channel. And again, I'm going to keep you into, updated on everything, <clears throat> up, up and through spring training into the season. We do recaps, we do live streams on the weekend. So if you do hit the subscribe button, hit the, all the notification bells as well. The like button if you enjoy the content and the notification bell. They're really helpful to the channel. And I just want to make sure you, you enjoy the content and don't miss anything. So I thank you for that. Um, now, pivoting over to what I really wanted to talk about, the reason, the reason why <clears throat> I've mentioned Jason Dominguez over like the past, uh, so let's say almost a year, or so as an option to be a trade to for trade is for a couple of reasons okay number one they, they drafted spencer jones in the collegiate draft okay and he's projected to be probably a major leaguer by 2024 he's comes from vanderbilt and he's got college experience so he's going to be closer to the majors he's closer to the majors right now than jason dominguez is and again this is not a knock on jason dominguez but i don't know if you remember last year they they drafted internationally Brent, um roderick arias Okay, and this is, I got to give Brian Cashman credit for this, so, because he's kind of, they changed their philosophy over the last couple of years internationally, and they used to stockpile a whole bunch of <clears throat> position players and pitchers and blah, 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 but now they've pivoted over to, we're going to go for the highest, most ranked guys, they're going to cost the most amount of money, obviously, eat up most of the, sp- the spending pool, but, and we'll get less players, but, you know, we want to get to the point where we can find our own Fernando Tatis, we can find our own Juan Soto, so we're not having to trade a haul for him, right, and this is exactly what they're doing. They started with Jason Dominguez, and then it's Roderick Arias, and now, yesterday is Brandon Maia. Okay, he ate up eighty percent of the international pool that they were. They had a lot of to them, four point four million dollars. They were a lot of five point two, so they only had eight hundred, a little over eight hundred thousand dollars to play with, a little under eight hundred thousand dollars to play with. So, they got a couple other guys. I, mean, I, I did a video on this yesterday. So they got an outfield, another shortstop. So, but this is what they're doing now. They're trying to get as high end players as possible to increase their chances of another star player or a player who can become a star at the major league level that they drafted internationally. I mean, there's been other guys like Mariano Rivera, Gary Sanchez, and some guys that they've met, you know, Miguel Andujar, mm-hmm. that they've drafted internationally. Maybe Severino. So it has panned out, but, you know, this is what they're doing now. You know, try, trying to get as high-ranked p- player as possible. And good for them. <clears throat> Excuse me. It, it, it could increase 
the chance of getting a guy like that. And again, how many times have we said trade for Juan Soto? Well, he was drafted internationally. So Tatis, before this whole circus happened, internationally. So, like, these guys weren't drafted in the NCAA amateur draft. So and this, so he's pivoting there, and I think it's a good job by Cashman. It's a necessary move they had to make. And it's done a good job. And look at, you know, how many play- And the reason why I, I've mentioned... Uh, Dominguez and trades because we now we we're, we're kind of we're heading down the uh, the trend of the shortstop. And what do I mean by that? Well, we're like six deep or seven deep at shortstop. So what happens? You got to trade a couple of these guys, right? You want to keep a few. Well, we're heading down that direction too. <clears throat> With the outfield, we got Everson Pereira, Spencer Jones, Dominguez. Now we have Brandon Maia. So we're getting to the point where they they have the ability to move a guy. And Jason Dominguez has a high ceiling, and he can get a lot. And again, I'm still. Holding out hope that he he if he if he if he is moved, he's moved for an upgrade in the outfit like Brian Reynolds. I know people don't want to hear about it, but it nothing is over yet. This this, this off is not over yet. I still think Cashman's going to make some kind of move. What I don't know, but he's a huge trade piece for the Yankees, and I can't see them moving Peraza. I think he's going to get a starting shortstop position, and I can't see them moving Anthony Volpe either. Even though the Pirates are asking for like two of the three of these guys, at some point they're going to have to lower their Ask, asking price because nobody's biting on what they're asking for. Nobody. Not even the Dodgers. Not even like any of the teams that have the, these prospects that they want. Nobody's biting on it. <clears throat> There's a reason why. It's because the price is way too high. Way too high. And like I said, they're asking for a King's Ransom, but they're valuing, valuing as, as not even a prince. So <laughs> that matters. And people see it. And Cashman and, and the rest of the GMs are smart enough to say, we're going to hold off. We're going to wait on this. And then we're going to wait and see. If they just decide to keep him, then they decide to keep him. They'll pivot really quickly, really quickly. But he's also shown a willingness to play Oswald Peraza or something like that and Hicks or whatnot, So, um, which I think will be Oswald Peraza at some point. I think he's, <laughs> he's more valuable to the Yankees than Hicks is right now. But this is one reason why I brought up Dominguez as a potential trade option because we knew a year ago, and I've said this, you look back a year, I have videos out on, on after they signed Roderick Garris that Brandon Maia was already linked to the Yankees. They were already favored favorites to sign them. They had a connection there. They had mutual interest. And <clears throat> it's almost like an unshaken, uh, unspoken agreement. And nothing changed after a year. That means they valued him pretty high. They could have signed anybody, but they went for Maia, Maia. And we talked about him a year ago. So this isn't new news. It's not breaking news either. But it's they have him here now. He's in the fold. And he's going to add to that deep outfield stud player you know, position there. So, which is great because we have a lot, we have more promise now in the outfield than we did before. And we're kind of right, just one step behind the depth that they have at shortstop, which is a good thing, a really good thing. So, let me know what you think of that. You know, I think Maya can make Dominguez expendable. I do. Now, if it doesn't happen, if they keep them both, fine. But keep in mind, too, we have Aaron Judge here for nine years. Spencer Jones might profile later as a first baseman, right? Because he's a big boy. And if he does, he does. But as all I know, there's talk about that that, that Japanese player who's going to be a free agent like two years after he's posted, who was the first base, and he's already mentioned the Yankees is the team he'd like to play for. So that has to be decided too. But if Spencer Jones is here, Spencer Jones is here. And if he's performing, then there's no need to get the Japanese player, right? So and and so it's just food for thought, gang. So leave, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. And if anything else comes out today, you'll obviously get it. Okay. And, um, you know, I appreciate you watching, appreciate you supporting the channel. I just don't want you to miss anything. So I'll keep it coming, gang. Have a great week. I'll talk to you next time.